Uh, in the pre presentation, I just want to talk about our, our organization, which is ThinkTech. Then we want to just shortly talk about the environmental problems that we need to solve, and then straight go to the technological solutions. So at first, uh, ThinkTech, I want to begin with a small history. So we started as conscious coders at uh, mostly the technical university because uh, some engineers and computer scientists wanted to think about the uh, ethical implications of um, the technology they are creating, uh, which is artificial intelligence or digitization in the broader aspect. And in the universities, there was not much covered on this topic, actually. So there were no ethics courses. So we did it ourselves. And um, at first started with presentations and workshops. And out of this initiative grew the organization called ThinkTech, which we founded in November 2019. And inside of ThinkTech, we also saw, OK, um, we really have to think about environmental topics as well. So we kickstarted a group that um, thinks uh, about environment at the intersection of digitization, computer science, and the environment in general. So on the next slide, I just want to reiterate uh, what do we do at ThinkTech. We want to provide an impartial view on the and give insights to policymakers and the broader public. Um, we see both the, the dangers and the huge potential. And we are now nowadays very interdisciplinary. So we are philosophers, artists, designers, uh, of course, engineers and computer scientists, and um, also very important social scientists working on different issues. And who are we? We are mostly students from the Technical University and the LMU, and also now that some people transition in their working lives uh, to jobs, also young professionals. So we cover a really broad range of topics. So the environment, the fairness group, which thinks about bias issues and discrimination, disarmament, uh, which is mostly about autonomous weapon systems, healthcare and democracy. And here at the environment group, like I said, um, we asked the question, what role can digitization play in sustainability, if any? And how can we ensure the positive impact of digitization on the environment? Because uh, it could be also the issue that digitization just increases the energy costs and is uh, actually bad for it. So, and that's something we want to figure out, what are the potentials here? And we are also interested in technologies uh, and science such as data science and machine learning uh, to understand what new possibilities there are. Okay, so before we get into the technological solutions, we just want to uh, restate the environmental problems and I give to Praval. Uh, thank you, Gabriel. So uh, just starting out with a brief background of the environmental problems uh, caused by transportation, broadly two, one is global warming, the other is pollution. So in global warming, we already know that the temperature is uh, one degree Celsius higher on average right now than it was uh, at the time of the industrial revolution. And uh, this has impact on sea levels and changing climatic patterns around the world. Uh, so we have 75% of the global greenhouse gas emissions, which are caused by our energy demands. And primarily those energy demands are in the building industries and the transportation sector. So significant uh, amount of greenhouse gas emissions are caused by the transportation sector. And within the transportation sector, a road transportation uh, makes up about 75% of the, uh, in, uh, the greenhouse gas emission. So this is particularly relevant for cities, which, are, which have a lot of road transportation. And uh, next, the pollution uh, is, uh, as you all know, like air, transportation causes air pollution, which leads to uh, damages in various organs, particularly, uh, you know, accelerated lung aging and increasing uh, cardiovascular disease risk. Next slide, please. So here we can see, uh, as I said, that the bulk of the greenhouse gas emissions is due to the energy sector. And if you see within the energy sector, transportation contributes about 16.2% to the greenhouse gas emissions. And as I said earlier, within the transportation sector, you can see that the bulk is consumed by the road transportation sector. The bulk of the emissions are caused by the 
road transportation sector, which is relevant for urban areas. Um, and with this, I think uh, I'll hand over to Jihad, who will talk about the European Green Deal. To take, actually, to take things uh, to action, in December 2019, the European Union decided to change the uh, economic strategy and to start with a sustainable economic strategy. So this required for sure a huge amount of funding. That why, that's why they placed one trillion in, multi, in multiple sector. For example, the for, uh, from farm to fork, uh, recycling, as we see here, renewable energy, and uh, use smart mobility. We are happy to discuss the smart mobility and start with some solution with Anna. Yeah, so I'll come to the technical solutions now. Um, so I first want to talk about um, solutions using machine learning. Um, here you can see an overview of the topics um, where you can use machine learning, for example, um, reducing uh, transportation or inefficient transportation, for example, through sensors and computer vision to model the demand um, and then reduce tra traffic or also plan around disruptions. And as a second part also um, to model the requirement of shared car systems. For vehicle efficiency, machine learning can help um, to make engines more efficient and also to reduce weight of vehicles or um, systems like autonomous driving or drones. Alternative fuels are still um, very much researched, for example, electrofuels, solar fuels, hydrogen, natural gas, or biofuels, and machine learning can help with this research as well. Electric cars um, have charging schedules and vehicle to grid systems, which um, machine learning can also help with, and we will address that later. And the last section is the model shift away from cars. Um, for example, forecasting public transit or the preferences of people using public transportation um, and also improving the costs and services of low carbon options, for example, bike sharing, um, or to optimize transportation routes or predict bus arrivals. So as an overview, I would say machine learning can help, especially to optimize transportation flows and technology. Um, next, I'm coming to the subtopic of drones. Um, I want to talk about package delivery drones here. So um, they are mostly autonomously um, controlled um, drones if you talk about package delivery. And the benefits of this is um, put a potential for the economy, um, less congestion, no needed infrastructure, for example, especially in rural areas or in areas with um, bad connections or bad infrastructure connections, um, drones can be really helpful. The negative effects are things like collisions, uh, privacy concerns due to the filming the drones are doing, and also things like smuggling or terrorist attacks, which can be um, where drones can be used. We always want to know, of course, what is the effect on the environment. And we can see in studies that the CO2 emission and also emission of other air pollutants can be reduced when um, drones replace um, other vehicles for um, delivery. But this only holds under certain conditions, for example, for last mile transportation. And if in an area there's just a, few, a small number of recipients. Um, but we do not have clear data yet for additional emissions, for example, extra warehousing or um, also the effect of the batteries on the environment. So here more research is needed. Additionally, we have noise pollution, which affects humans and animals. And for animals, we have additional things like seeing drones as threats, collision with birds. Um, yeah. So next I want to hand over um, for the electric car topic. Thank you, Anna. So let's dive a little bit here, a little bit deeper into electric car solution and how can electric car help our, our, our reduce the impact on the environment. Two points, two main points to understand about electrical car, that a battery is a storage system in the electrical car and uh, the magnetic field is the engine driver. There are multiple of electrical 
car type, or always it depends on the uh, on the driver of the electrical car. Smart charging. So what is smart charging? Smart charging is a combination between a platform where can, where can collect the data of the customer behavior and the load of uh, of the electricity in the house and connect that with the electrical car together. So how can smart charging help? By using the battery not, not only as a storage, but also as a supporter for the grid with multiple uh, principles. For example, reduce the peak demand. So there is no need to charge the electrical car while, while in the peak demand hour. And also uh, the battery of the car, as Anna said, uh, B to uh, X principle or vehicle to grid principle. And uh, another way which can help it, uh, the smart charging while only charging with renewable energy. And there is another solution or another principle called the battery swap system. So this is a station where you can replace your car without any need for waiting for the charging period. Another solution where we see uh, AI helping the environment is autonomous driving. Autonomous driving, we, uh, which means that the computer system take, o take over all the driving responsibility, which need help also from radar, motion sensor, camera, and accurate GPS. For sure, there is also a complex algorithm allow the car to drive by itself which can help the environment by less emission as most driverless cars are electrical vehicles or electrical car. Also the behavior of the autonomous driving, it's much better for the environment than the human behavior. One, one autonomous driving car can do multiple function, which means less uh, cars per household. And uh, at the end it will park uh, itself alone for sure less accident, we will save uh, humans and also less car production, less steel production. In the graph in the graph on the right, we can see a comparison bet between autonomous driving and the normal car and bus, uh, individual taxi, also public car and railway, for sure the autonomous driving is much lower than, than the human driving or driving the normal car. So Anna, can you share with us a little bit more examples? Um, so I will end with um, three more examples, which are more specific. In the first one, um, there was a study done about um, transportation networks during big events, for example, protests. Um, here they looked at uh, train connections and the number of peoples, and in the end modeled the transportation network of public transport to find weak spots and weak times where you shouldn't um, plan a big, big event because it would have a higher disruption potential for the public transport. The second example is an example with data from Munich. Here they modeled um, the demand of car sharing and taxi services because it turned out that um, those services are increasingly needed when the public transportation is delayed. So they used the delay data of tra public transportation to model car sharing and taxi demand. And the third one is a bit different. Um, here, they use uh, localization technology um, for real-time uh, route optimization of waste collection vehicles. So they basically um, scanned where the vehicles are, how fast they were, and then um, coordinated between different waste collection cars to reduce um, also the time the, the cars need and the um, route they have to drive. So this is uh, the end of our small input talk. We now have a list of questions we can potentially discuss. Of course, we can talk about anything else if you'd like to, um, obviously regarding the um, general topic of transportation. And we would really like to apply it to Munich. So example questions we have here are, what do you think about the pub public transportation in Munich? What could be improved? Do we need more technology or less? Um, how could we reduce car travel? Should the center of Munich become car free? Should Munich focus on electric cars? Should we use drones? And how can we make car sh sharing more attractive? Or is that a good option? Um, we have a mode to uh, 
discuss this and I hope this works out. Can you see the, the other slide now? Yes. Okay. So this is Flinger. Um, I will post this in the chat in a second. Um, just to describe how it works, this is designed so we can all work on this. So I encourage you to make your own points here. Um, basically, the idea was that each topic we want to discuss, please do it verbally as well, um, but also add your points here to the board. Um, use the blue color up here, uh, you can choose a color, and the square if you want to add a new topic, for example, machine learning. And then click enter and it uh, comes here into the screen and then you can just click on this one and connect it here as a new topic. And um, if you have any criticism or positive points to the topic, you can use the circles and then add it in red or in green um, to the topic you want to look at. So um, did anybody send it in the chat already? Or should I do that? Just we have uh, a question from Mr. Tarek, I think. Okay. Well, no, no question. Just actually a few um, uh, comments on your slides. Uh, so if you're looking for feedback, I'm happy to share, but I believe this is better if we do it at a, at a later point. Excellent presentation, by the way. Thank you.